Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today, I wanna tell you about the new DeWalt DCS 781, the 12-inch sliding compound miter saw. It's a beauty. And we're gonna go over all the details on it really quick, but before we do, don't forget to click that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Thanks for coming to our channel. Hope you enjoy this video today. All right, just got this in from DeWalt a couple days ago. Got it mounted up to our cut hub. Didn't really have to do much for as far as dialing it in. For what we do, we don't need a cabinetry accuracy on our saw, but we need we want it to be fairly accurate, especially when we start, if we're cutting a lot of PVC and that kind of things with our saw, we do need it fairly accurate. So occasionally I'll check it for squareness, for plumb, whatever. So it's cutting right, left, and up and down, all in the same angle, 90 degrees, whatever. Sometimes I can take a square, which I don't have on me at the moment. Should I go grab one? When I first get a, a brand new chop saw, I wanna see how accurate it is on a 90, going up and down like this, and coming out. This saw looks pretty dialed. I mean, that looks really good. And this is a pretty accurate square. I'm pretty happy. That's gonna perform very well for us. So the biggest feature difference of this saw and my old saw, which I don't remember the model number, I think it was 780 maybe, is that this saw only takes one battery. It comes with a nine amp hour battery. The old saw I had took two batteries. So you always had to two, have two additional batteries charged when you had to do a battery swap. Now it lasted a long time, I don't think that this one battery, I have a 12 amp hour battery on here right now. I don't think that one battery is gonna last as long as two, but I haven't burned through a battery yet because the saw is brand new. So uh, that's something I can answer maybe in a future video or if somebody has a question, I can get back to you with an answer on that as far as longevity on how long does the battery last. But we had a half a day on it yesterday and we probably will have a half a day today, but we're not using it constantly. Usually our dual battery, chop saw when we're using it heavily would last a day or maybe a day and a half. So I'll get back to you guys on that. A couple of improvements that I've noticed is that the locker, this, this lock right here that locks the uh, headstock down for, for portability or when you're stowing it, it's a really nice spring loaded, very easy to get to. The other one was like, it was near this part here and it was hard to find sometimes. This is no doubt in my mind where this is. If I want to just hold it like that, as soon as I pull this down, it'll lock. And it's going to lock in the down position. So I like that. Another thing I like about the new saw is where they put the, the spring-loaded release. So when you want to turn this, because there's all these locking, pre-guided locked areas on the saw where you can lock it in to a certain degree, like 31.9, or excuse me, 31.6. And then here's 22 and a half, 15 degrees, and zero. There's a couple other over here. This is a 45 locker, which obviously we, we always are used to that, spoiled. The saw will actually turn to a 60 degree angle this way. Right now we have our chop shops in the way, so we can't quite get to 60 degrees. If I need that 60 degree angle, I'm going to pull this out and it, then it will work. Over here, you can go all the way to 50 degrees this way. So I think that's an improvement on the old saw as well, but I'm not 100% on that because I don't have the other saw here, so I don't recall. But I do like the fact that there's a wide range of motion right and left. You can turn 10 degrees tighter turning to the right than you can to the left. The dial for moving the saw on a 45 is about the same. You pull, again, an improved handle, which is kind of nice. So you can pull this all the way to 45. You can actually, there's a, a, a stopper right here, but you can also set this to turn only a certain amount. There's a couple of settings right here, a couple of gauges, if you wanna lock this down and only go to like a 22 and a half. This, the saw leans freely to the left and there's 22 and a half and then you can pull that one back and then it'll go down to about a 34 degree angle. And then you can pull that and then it'll go all the way to 45. So that's usually, we don't use those two stoppers too much, but they're there if you need them, which is kind of nice. Another thing is there's also a depth gauge. So you'll notice there's a positive lock at zero. If you wanna turn the saw to the other direction, you just gotta pull that, that pin and now it'll turn to 45 degrees this way. There's also a way to get it to go further than 45 degrees if you need to bevel over a 45 degree 
angle, there's a positive stop. There's a positive stopper right here. That that will stop you at 45. So if you need to go over 45, then you have to rem Looks Okay, hold on a sec. Let's figure this out. My old one used to let me go past the 45. Okay, one thing I like about this is this back pin that lets you swivel the saw right and left. You can actually turn it so it'll allow you to just keep swiveling. It won't lock in place, but if you need it to be back to zero, you can lock it in like this and then drop it back to zero and then it will put you back at 90 degrees to zero. Then you just have to tighten up the back of the saw. Now you're at 90. There's also a new piece that you can lock in. So if you wanna transport the saw, it locks it in place and that keeps it from wanting to move back and forth even though this is tight, it still gives you that little extra. You can also turn it this way and lock it like so and do the same thing. So it kind of depends on where you want to lock it out at. If you just want to use it like a standard chop saw, you could put this lock locking mechanism on here, tighten this up, and then it's just a standard chop saw without the ability to slide. So there's some people that might just need to make repetitive cuts and they don't want to be able to move the saw back and forth and they still might want to use it. That's what that's for. I doubt I'll use that a whole bunch, but you never know. And then it has a little positive stop right here so that it'll lock together. And then there's also your standard depth gauge. This flips down. If you only want to cut so deep into a, a piece of material, you can, and it's adjustable with a wing nut right here. So you just loosen up your wing nut, raise or lower this, tighten your wing nut up to the depth you want. And now you can make repetitive depth cuts at the same depth on multiple materials if you just need to get to a certain point and cut it to a certain depth and do it repetitively or even if it's just once and you want to make sure you don't go too deep you can put that in just don't forget to return that when you're done and you want to resume normal operation another cool feature there's an led light on the top of this you can push that and it'll shine down you can't really see it because it's sunny out right now sometimes that casts a shadow you really can't see it at this moment in time when it's dark though Actually you can, and it shines on the blade. So what it does is it shows you an indicator of a shadow of where the blade's going to cut on your material, which I don't use it a whole lot. It's kind of like the concept of a laser, but it's not a laser. It's just actually an LED light that shines a shadow down onto the wood at the right place. So if I put a mark on here, like sometimes when it's dark out, I can see it really well and then I use it. But usually if it's sunny out like this, it's not gonna work too well for us. Let's cut a couple boards and show you guys how that works. So this is a two by 12. So this saw does have a two by 12 cutting capacity straight. So let's give it a cut and see how it goes. So that was a super clean cut. Um, by the way, this is a 60 tooth blade that DeWalt puts on the saw. So it's a nice blade, all purpose construction blade. You can see it has a nice clean cut. There's not a lot of fray. It's a brand new blade though. So I ex kind of expect that. Our old saw left a little bit of fray. It was a Irwin blade and it was probably three months old. It's very used. Not a bad cut. Let's try a 45 degree miter. This saw will not cut all the way through on a 45 degree angle through a piece of two by 12. It just isn't gonna do it. So, but here we go. Okay, so to finish this cut, we're gonna have to turn the saw all the way to the other side of a 45. To finish the cut. You can get through it, but it's gonna take two cuts. So the cool thing about this saw is it's called a compound slide miter saw for a reason. So let's just put this on a 45. Let's put this on a 45. Our cut hub's in the way, so I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Okay, so on a total 45, this fence is in the way. So that's why we take ours off quite often. And it's not hard to take it off. You just gotta unscrew this, this wing nut a little out and then that can come off. Now we can totally go whatever we need to go and cut us a compound miter. And there you go. So, you know, you can put that together and give it to somebody as a gift. It's perfect. Yeah, pterodactyl style. So we're not gonna be doing a ton of compound miters. We do them occasionally, but mostly what this saw for us is, is a workhorse. 
and it's mostly cutting 90 degree angles 90% of the time because we just have a lot of straight cuts, but we need them accurate. So we just have a lot of straight standard cuts that we make on our lumber like so. And there you go. Not a bad cut at all, guys. To change a blade, you're gonna pull the battery and then you're gonna have to remove a couple fasteners off of here. You'll get to this nut right here and it says right here on the saw, loosen, you gotta loosen it, you gotta turn it to the right or tighten to loosen the blade. It's a reverse thread. And there's actually a locking mechanism on this side of the saw that will pin the blade so it doesn't move. So you gotta push that in. You'll pull the, a couple parts off of here to get this to lift up out of the way so you can actually get to this blade changing mechanism as well. Actually, I, I think you can probably squeeze it in there without, that's kind of cool. They made it so you don't have to remove this. As long, this piece here is like a safety. You, you would pull that down and then you can actually get to this. There should be an onboard tool. I think I left it in the box, but you would just, uh, it's an Allen key. And you just loosen the blade with that and then then you don't have to remove any of this mechanism, which is kind of cool. So that was that's nice, because that used to be a problem. So there's my first impressions of this saw. Uh, we're gonna put it to work. It's gonna be running day and night through sleet, snow, hail, rain, and sun. So thanks for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.